The Greatness Show with Sophie. Come and cultivate the seed of greatness that lies within you every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. right here on 105.3 FOFM, your infotainment station. take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever. show here on 105.3 Afro FM. I'm your host Sophie and today in the studio right with me I have Dr. Mehret. Welcome Dr. Mehret. Uh, thank you. Um, today we have a session on attitude uh-huh. and uh, we're going to see how our attitude affects our life. And uh, I'm very excited because it's a, uh, it's it's a really big topic. Well, so. is, you know, some people even say no, attitude is everything. It's not like you know, it's really everything, everything. But it determines everything. It's how you look, everything, including yourself, life, and other people. So I'm excited as well <laughs> to see attitude. You know how you see things, basically. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, <coughs> We're going to start off with what mind is, I think, and then we're going to... Exactly, because, you know, if you see you know, a Habesha guy you know, or a girl, you know, you have to understand, you know, what the Habesha land is before. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then, 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 you know, you can easily understand what Habesha is, because, you know, if you know what they eat and <coughs> where they live, and then that's when, uh, how what defines Habesha, in a sense. So, uh, if, if, if the same with attitude, mm. because, you know, attitude does not, you know, exists separately you know mm. it's, it's a function of your mind yes and it depends on how you understand your mind to to, to say you no know, this is attitude and this is how it forms and it affects people and it can change yes so really to, to kind of get a bird's eye view of the mind yes kind of gives us perspective like you know, a telescopic perspective of what the mind is and then we can you know dive into what attitude exactly good okay. so we start off with that Oh, good. <laughs> so I don't know, you know, you know, the first question always I ask, you know, when I talk about the mind is, you know, <clears throat> we all talk about, you know, we should change how we think and, you know, the mind should change before everything changes. You know, the, the first, the basic question is, what's the mind? What mm-hmm. is it? Because you know, everybody has one, you know, from the time we're born, you know, we all carry one around and uh, 
uh, it's very fascinating because it's really mysterious in, any, in many ways. <coughs> because you know, all the old philosophers and the new scientists, they still are you know searching what the mind is, and it still is a mystery. A mystery. Mm. It doesn't mean that we don't know or mm. know anything, but what we know is really immense. So I know the first thing is, you know, what's really the mind? Where is it? What does it do? Why is it created? I mean, it's such a mystery yes. uh, in life. And if you see kids, you know, their mind is so fascinating. Actually, when we grow, we lose some of it. Mm. Uh, we think, you know, we grow up and then, you know, we lose some of it. <coughs> but the, 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 the thing is, you know, the first thing I, I usually raise is, you know, is this the mind-brain dilemma. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, you know, we, we can understand the brain. Where is your brain? It's easy. It's in your skull. Yeah. And it's a hard bone. Yes. Uh, hard bone. <coughs> uh, uh, and, you know, even the brain is very sophisticated uh, stuff. It says it's probably the most complicated machinery ever in you know, the network. Mm. In the number of cells you have in it, in the functions it does. Yeah. You know, leave alone the, the, the abstract and the complicated stuff. If you see how your brain controls your body, yeah. And the whole, you know, perception thing, you know, your eyes, your ears, and, you know, the whole, you know, your taste and your smell, and how the, your brain really, you know, you think you see with your eyes, actually you see with your brain. It just, you know, takes the, the image, otherwise everything's processed in the brain. Yes. And, you know, your hands, how they function, if you see musicians and artists, and the, the brain is such, such, it's tremendous, hmm. machinery. And then when you go to the, the, the world of emotions, the feeling, mm. yeah. the affection, the desire we have. Mm -hmm. And then you know, that's something you know, even much deeper than, you know, how we think, you know, that's the fact that, you know, our, our, our mind or our brain process ideas. Mm. I mean, we, we get fascinated with computers. Yes. And computers are really very, you know, fascinating things, which are the product of the mind, basically, or the brain. Yeah. So uh, the brain, in itself is really complicated and it is, it's, 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 it's a very fascinating thing. But the mind probably is more, more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, the way I see it is, you know, uh, the brain is the hardware mm. where our mind primarily functions. Uh, because, you know, it's not only uh, in our brain, you know, how scientists are saying uh, uh, our, 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 our mind functions at, because, you know, people who, who, who go through uh, a heart transplant, yeah. you know, when they're done, they change their personality. Mm. So it's not only the brain, which really, you know, helps the mind to function. And there's this guy, for example, like, you know, he's, he was 50 years old, mm. about 50 when he did this surgery, often he changed his heart because mm. he had a problem in his heart. And, uh, uh, what happened was, uh, this guy is a European descent, very, you know, uh, educated and he likes classical music. And what he eats is more European type kind of food and mm -hmm. all those things. Yeah. And once he did this uh, heart transplant, you know, he really changed. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean like he works the same job. He still, you know, remembers, you know, who he is and all those things. It's not there. But what changed was, you know, the kind of food he likes changed completely to uh, Mexican food, mm. spicy stuff. Okay. He didn't like that before. <laughs> okay. And you know the kind of music now he likes and the salsa and all those Latino <laughs> music, you know, which he was not that kind of person. Okay. And he started to you know go to these parties and, and, and he, uh. he became all of a sudden somebody different. Uh. And then they, they traced back to where he got that heart. Yeah. And what happened was it was a 20 year old Mexican guy's heart. Okay. So I mean, so which means you know the mind is really you know it's not even in, in you know brain. confined to the brain yeah. but you know it doesn't mean the brain is a simple organ hmm. Wow for anyone who's just joined us we are um, with Dr. Meharat today and he's giving us a session on attitude uh -huh. and he even calls that it's the key to our to our mind uh, exactly yeah, yeah. I mean, in a sense you know you, you have a nice vehicle yeah and you have you know fully loaded you know SUV or you know you know this you know land cruiser you can say it would like you know, yeah. here and then uh, you know the key is a small thing, yes. and then you forget your key, you don't have a car, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a car, but you don't have it. Yes. So, but you know, the key is not everything. You can't sit on the key and drive it on the road. No. People laugh at you. Um, so the attitude <laughs> is really, you know, it's not everything else per se, but you know, the key is everything to the car. Yes. So long as, you know, you know, uh, starting the car on and then driving the car. So attitude is something like, you know, very small, you know, you can put it in your, in your pocket, but yeah. you know, it really controls, you know, what, puts, what, you, what you drive. 
have is this big car and something like that, yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a look at that. He's, go he's going to give us a fantastic session on that, mm -hmm. and we're going to go deeper, and, and we're going to see what that means. Mm -hmm. So what is attitude yeah, and exactly. what constitutes attitude, uh -huh. and then we're going to see how we can change some of the things that uh, we may we may not it may not be serving us some of the attitudes that me, we may be holding that may not exactly. uh, yeah yeah uh, be yeah. You know, because you know when we're born we don't have attitude and if you see you now newborns they don't have it you know attitude forms through our life cycle mm. some of it is good yes. some of it is not some of it is rich some of it is poor you know some of it is really you know twisted some of it is really straight and then you know also attitude has formed once upon a time and then through time through time so now there is hope to change to change yes so 8444 is the text line you can send uh, your text through that for your questions or comments and uh, we'll be right back birds flying high you know how I feel Sun in the sky You know how I feel Breeze drifting on by You know how I feel It's a new dawn It's a new day It's a new life for me and I'm feeling good I'm feeling good fish in the sea you know how I feel River running free, you know how I feel. Blossom on a tree, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Dragonfly out in the sun. You know what I mean, don't you know? Butterflies all having fun. You know what I mean? Sleep in peace when day is done. That's what I mean. And this old world is a new world and a bold world for me. Above. of the pine you know how I feel You're listening to The Greatness Show here on 105.3 Afro FM. I'm your host Sophie and today I have Dr. Meherat right here with me. He is a psychologist, a psychiatrist. I get that confused again. <laughs> a psychiatrist 
um, uh, who he's practicing. Uh, he has been trained and he's practicing in the U.S. and he's back and forth here in Addis. Yeah, on and, on and off. Like, on and off. When I have here, have there. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and we have him here right in the studio, and he's giving us a session on attitude today and we have started off with this uh, marvelous explanation of what a mind is first and then we're going to go into that okay good so as i said you know the, the, the brain in mind you know the, the best analogy i found is like you know in a computer you know you have your hardware including your gadgets which you can touch and you know see and there is that software which you can't see but you know whether it's a window or microsoft thing or you know even mac or mac OS and all, all those you know softwares and applications in the hardware embedded yes and that's a lot like the, the mind is <coughs> it's a functional aspect of uh, you know our, 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 our who we are yes. and, 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 and so the mind and the brain you cannot really separate the two mm -hmm. because you know if you see the mind the brain what it does is you know it, it distorts everything we perceive mm -hmm. so that the mind can use that as a resource Mm -hmm. It controls the body functions, the cardiovascular, you know, the GI, and all your systems are controlled by the, the brain. Mm -hmm. So that the mind has some, you know, awareness of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, you get all this information through so many ways. Yeah. And then the brain really, you know, makes, you know, shape and form to that. And then in our mind mm -hmm. can function well. Because, you know, when, let's say, like, you didn't sleep for five days, mm. you know, it's, it's, you're not affecting your mind directly, mm. but your brain didn't get rest, mm. then your mind is not functioning well. Mm -hmm. So your, your, your mind actually depends on your brain, and your brain depends on your body, because you know, if you don't eat for three days, you cannot function well, because, mm. you know, your brain needs the glucose to function. So it's really interdependent. So when we see the mind, basically, how I see it is, it's the functional the functional aspect of it mm -hmm. like you know when we say the mind it's your imagination imagination being you know how you see something which is not available to your senses mm -hmm. like for example if I, if I say now uh, we're going to the airport and now we're getting into the, the plane you can see it mm -hmm. but it's not with your eyes mm -hmm. so imagination is you know your you know your mind eye basically mm -hmm. how you can see things before they happen and then, you know, your creativity comes. Whatever you see, like, you know, if you want to build a house, you have a blueprint, that's your imagination. Mm -hmm. And then you, you build a house, that's your creativity. Every day we imagine things. When you come to the office, you imagine what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And you do exactly that yes. with some change, of course. And then, you know, your, your attitude is, you know, <coughs> it's not what you see, like your imagination, but it's how you see things. Mm -hmm. Usually with attitude, it's either, you know, you see it negatively or positively, mostly qualitative. <coughs> So that's why, you know, attitude determines everything. It doesn't mm. matter what you see. If you see that negatively, it's really loss. Mm. It doesn't matter how small it is. If you see it positively, it can grow. Mm. So the attitude is there. Mm. And then, <coughs> sorry, I have this call. And the other thing is motivation. Mm. It's like, you know, if we take that example of the car, mm. you have your tank, and mm. either it's full or empty, mm. and you, you have your key, nice attitude, you have your car mm. <coughs> and everything. If you don't have gas, you're going nowhere. No. So uh, motivation is your, your drive to do, you know, the mind, yes. the, the energy of your mind. Yes. And the reason is you know, you're your investigator. Mm. How do you know it's true or false? Yeah. And how do you verify things? How do you form your attitude even? That's where reason comes. Mm. And then and finally, you know, <coughs> the content of your mind, how, why you, we go to school, why we read and everything. Mm. It is it's wisdom and knowledge. You have, for example, you know, <coughs> the environment. You, 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 you know, somebody, you, know, you, you let me come here. Yes. And then I learn things. This is the environment. Yeah. Then I collect some data about, okay, this is a FM, and then this is a studio, this is everything, this is the parking lot. <coughs> and then, you know, I kind of compile that data and f get some information. Yeah. Now I can tell people the information. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean they know it. No. They should come here and mm -hmm. experience for themselves. Mm -hmm. Then that information is changing into knowledge. Yes. And then, you know, when I come here and I can't do what you're doing, hmm. you know, when I really, you know, internalize that knowledge and know how to apply and when to do that and, you know, know that the, the practical aspect of that knowledge, it gets into that wisdom aspect. Hmm. So as you go up on the ladder, there are fewer and fewer people. Hmm. So these are really <coughs> all the functions of your mind. So the brain does provide the raw material, the hmm. resource, 
for these functions to operate properly. Mm. If you kill somebody's imagination, it's like, you know, putting off his eyes. Mm. You can't see. Mm. Yeah, so basically that's what the mind is. <coughs> it's really it's a wide topic, you know, because, you know, like we're going to talk about Adiru today, you know, all the, the other functions are also very important, you know, they all work together in a concerted fashion. Mm -hmm. So that's why what makes the mind very fascinating. And the other function you have is language. Yeah. The language is you know how one mind communicates with the other mm -hmm. like you know if you don't use any language now and we're going to have a show can we no so whatever idea we have our mind uses its faculty the language yeah. aspects so with language you know it's another very fascinating thing you know because you know if you see greek and you know uh, latin and german english you know their language is so rich mm -hmm. which means their mind is so rich yeah like for example if you say what's computer in amharic computer mm. what's laptop in America laptop. laptop and there are things because you know the more your mind gets rich in your imagination rich in your creative rich in your language develops mm -hmm. and the more language you have the easily you can imagine mm -hmm. and if I say for example uh, red mm. beautiful uh, aromatic have some thorn a garden what comes to your mind Rose. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Because of language, you can mm -hmm. create imagination. Exactly. But if I don't have those words, can you... You, you can't. <coughs> so I think the mind is a very fascinating thing, but for today, we're not going to talk about all yes, those things. Yes. We're just going to zoom out attitude. Okay. On. All right, so you're listening to The Greatness Show here on 105.3 Afro-FM. I'm your host, Sophie, and I have Dr. Meharit right here with me, and he's, he's, he's sharing with us, he's giving us a session on... Um, attitude. We started off with what the mind is and uh, the functions of the mind and there are so many and from them we're just picking uh, one that is attitude for today and we would like to ask you our dear audiences um, what do you think attitude, attitude is and how does it show up in your life so try to see how, how what what your meaning is to that what do you attach to it so you can go ahead and text in at 8444 uh, or you can go to the Greatness Show on a 5.3 Afro FM Facebook page and share with us. So, what is attitude for you? All right, that's the question, uh, and uh, we'll be right back.
to The Greatness Show here on 105.3 Afro FM. I'm your host Sophie and I have Dr. Mehret right here with me. We're going through attitude today. Uh, he's sharing, he's giving us a session on what it is and uh, what constitutes, we, we say attitude all the time and if you shift your perception and everything shifts and things like that but we're really seeing what it means and uh, how we can uh, how we can make a better use of it, I think, mm-hmm. today. So we continue without. Ah, good. Okay, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> you know, to understand attitude, <clears throat> it's not like your eyes or your nose where you're born with. Yeah. Uh, we all are born with the with the potential to have an attitude, but you know we're you know, attitude neutral basically. You know, that's the only time we are attitude neutral. Mm-hmm. Once you know we pass that stage you interact with the environment mm-hmm. uh, which means your you know your, your family and the people around depending on you know your age <coughs> your friends your school your culture your religion and ideas of different sorts from media and you know yeah. whatever yeah. and then all those things kind of you know collide with your mind yeah. 
And in the meantime, you have to develop a way of looking at things. Uh, especially, I like the Amharic term, Amelekaket. It's mm. not Iyita, uh, it's Amelekaket, mm. how you look on things. Mm. So when you say child, you know, newborn, you know, they smile, you know, at the air that people and people say, you know, angels are making them laugh because, you know, they, they're so, you know, attitude neutral. It would really be nice in a way if you can keep that, but, you know, in a way you can't. You have yeah. to have some attitude about things, yes. people, yes. life itself, idea about yourself. Yeah. So, you know, that's how, you know, attitude comes to picture. Mm -hmm. So our mind really you know, wants to have a form of, you know, evaluation form about, you know, whatever you come across with. Yeah. So that's why, you know, attitude is very complicated or a complex mental status or mm -hmm. mental state. Mm -hmm. And, you know, which is formed from your values you develop through your age yes. or through your life cycle and your, your feelings and your emotion. That's the momentary feeling you have. Yeah. Like, for example, if you're really depressed and you can have the best values ever, yeah. if your feelings is down, you know, that really colors, you know, everything, your attitude about yeah. the day kind of gets gloomy or something like that. Yeah. Or your belief system as well. Yeah. How you see suffering, how you see joy, how you see relationship and stuff, you know, beliefs and uh, has, you know, a lot of uh, things to do with that and your disposition some people are you know you go like you know people go like kind of people <coughs> yeah. so you know we have that you know temperament we come up with you know when we're born yeah. so attitude has some you know disposition or predisposition to who you are you know as a person which mm -hmm. calls also, also personality so all these things you know you know like you know this famous Ethiopian sauce what you know, you have, say, Doro what? Mm. Doro what doesn't taste like Doro, it doesn't taste like Shinkurs, or it doesn't taste like any of its components. It mm. has its own, you know, unique flavor <laughs> to it. Yeah. And we call it Doro what? Yes. And everybody's, you know, swallowing their saliva. <laughs> one anyway. And attitude is just like that. It yeah. brings all these things and it predisposes you to act in a certain way. Uh -huh. Or the other thing, the other way you can say is, your tendency to act either positively yes. or negatively. Tendency, okay. That's your tendency hmm. to ideas. You know, somebody takes some idea, you form an attitude. Hmm. Somebody, uh, you come across someone, hmm. you don't know a stranger, yeah. you form an attitude. Hmm. Or it can be situation, mm -hmm. or it can be things, hmm. anything. So your, that's your tendency to choose or to act in a positive or negative way. Yes. Or sometimes they, they also call it, you know, uh, <coughs> it's something, you know, it involves not just your feeling, it involves your cognition, your thinking. Because mm -hmm. when you form an attitude, there is a, an aspect of thinking to it. There is an aspect of feeling to it. Mm. And there is an aspect of, you know, evaluativeness to it. You know, you, you evaluate, you know, very fast. Yes. You know, when, when, you see some, when you're in such a situation, you know, you either be very defensive or very friendly. Or, mm -hmm. you know, you either be very humble or you just get, you know, very, you know, you know kind of arrogant in a sense. You mm -hmm. know? So your attitude really is, you know, something uh, uh, that that that's not only feeling, that's not only thinking, that's not only evaluative. Mm. That's also more connective, which is means you have an inclination, a tilt. So when you have four people in the same situation, they don't respond the same way, mm. regardless of you know how same the situation is, because mm. what they see is not the only thing that matters. Mm. How they see is it. mm. that's that's also sort of attitude. And attitude sometimes you know we call it attitude because you know oh that man has an attitude. We say mm. Mm. how do we know that? Mm. Can we see attitude? No. But you know attitude it doesn't only affect your mind, but it affects your body. Mm. If somebody is you know galamet and you know he look at me, he gave me a bad look. Yeah. You know in his body is you now the person's body is really you know changed because yeah. of the attitude. Yeah. Like you know your mind controls your body and everything. Attitude also kind of overflows to your body. Uh -huh. Somebody who's fearful, you can tell you know they yes. sit on the edge and yes. you know they're already ready to run. But yeah. somebody who's very paranoid, you know suspicious, you know yeah. looks around and as if there's something you know is going to be killed kind yeah. of. Thing. So attitude you know, also affects your body mm. and it affects your environment. Mm. If you have somebody who is very paranoid, very suspicious, you become one. Mm. Because it really affects the environment as yeah. well. So that's what it is, is basically. Mm. 
So uh, with, with attitude, you know, as I said, you know, it, it, it's not like, you know, something you can point your finger on. Mm. But, you know, you take everything, you process that, and you make a value judgment. Mm. And then that value judgment would be more important than the actual value of the thing. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And, but we have, we, we can control that, though. Yeah, we can, because, you know, uh, as I said, you know, the, the, the best paradigm would be, you know, when we're born, we don't have attitude. Mm. We form it. You know, unfortunately, most of our attitude is formed when we're kids, mm. because, you know, we, we, we take everything in, mm. and because, you know, if we told you're stupid, you know, we take it in. Mm. We, if we say we would call you king and you princess, we take it in. Mm. So, unfortunately, you know, most of the attitude is formed when we're kids, but the good thing and the good news is, you know, our brain can change, our mind can change anytime. You don't have to be a kid to change. Mm. I mean, it's, it's harder to change. Like if you have a cement, which is you know, freshly made and stuff, yeah. so you can mold it. It's easy yeah. it's because it's more fluidy. Yes. As it gets drier and drier, you know, it's harder to mold. Yes. But, you know, you can still have some way of making it happen, you know. Yes. But, you know, still, attitude can change. That's what the science says. You can change your attitude any time. Because if you can change your values, mm. it means you can amend your, your, your yeah, attitude. You can, if you can change your beliefs, mm. if you can change your, you know, your, uh, how you form your world view, yeah. basically you can change your attitude. And attitude is not something that's imposed on you. Mm -hmm. so attitude is actually basically it's a will, uh, a will work, which means you choose your attitude. Mm. Like, you know, let's, let's say you wake up in the morning and the day is not yet bigger mm. and you haven't met anybody. And then you choose your attitude. You know, you speak a lot of things about the day, or oh, what the day is, gloomy day, and all those things and stuff and stuff. Then you know, you form it. You know, the day has nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. But you can do by the same token. You can say, what a bright day, what a nice day. It's yeah. good to live one more day and stuff. And that prepares your mind yeah. to fulfill that. Yeah. And you know, some people, you know, see you know the same thing, same environment. They see all the negatives, yeah. and they speak all that negative. And then, then, then the attitude, you know. You know, goes that way. Yes. It's like a river. You can diverse it anywhere. Yes. It's probably easier to diverse some, you know, a tributary or some stream than Nile. Yeah. And some attitudes are really like, you know, big, big rivers. Yeah. But yeah. still, we can. We we're trying to do this uh, dam now. You know, we haven't done it forever. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we can't do it. Now yes. we're doing it. Yes. And people have done more than that. Yes. So people have tamed or people have really controlled a lot of things. And attitude is not, you know, uh, out of the zone. We can do that. That's wonderful. Um, for anyone who's just joined us, I have Dr. Mehrat here in the studio with me, and he's sharing. He's giving us a session on attitude today, and we're we have a looked at uh, what uh, first mind is because uh, the, our attitude is within the mind, and now we're going through attitude. We're going to zoom in mm -hmm. on attitude, and then we're going to see what uh, what it means really, and how we can shift it in a way that can help our life because at the end of the day that's the whole point we understand what it is and then uh, we use it to better our life so uh, 8444 is the text line we have asked you our dear audiences what does attitude mean to you what what does it bring up in your mind when you think of attitude so you can go ahead and share with us at 8444 and we'll be right back This is a song for every girl who's ever been through something she thought she couldn't make it through, yeah. Mm, I sing these words because I was that girl too, wanting something better than this, but who do I turn to? Now we're moving from the darkness into the light This is the defining moment of our lives mm, yeah. Cause you're beautiful like a flower More valuable than a diamond You 
are powerful like a fire. You can heal the world with your mind. There is nothing in the world that you cannot do when you believe in you. Who are beautiful? Yeah, you. Who are brilliant? Yeah, you. Who are powerful? Yeah, you. Who are resilient? This is a song for. Every girl who feels that she is not special, 'cause she don't look like a supermodel Coke bottle. The next time the radio tells you to shake your money maker, shake your head and tell them, tell them you're a leader. Now we're moving from the darkness into the light. Is the defining moment of our lives? Yeah, 'cause you're beautiful like a flower, more valuable than a diamond. You are powerful like a fire. You can heal the world with your mind. There is nothing in the world that you cannot do. When you believe in you, who are beautiful, yeah you. Who are brilliant, yeah you. Who are powerful, yeah you. Who are resilient, yeah you. Who are beautiful, yeah you. Who are brilliant, yeah you. The Greatness Show we're on 105.3 Afro FM. Uh, we have attitude as a session today with uh, Dr. Meherat right here, and uh, we've asked you, our dear audiences, what attitude means to you, and uh, we would like to hear that. 8444 is the text line, and we're we have started off seeing attitude. Now mm-hmm. we're yeah, we're going yeah. deeper, mm-hmm. and at the end, the whole point of having this show is how can we change our attitude. In a way that serves our life. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we continue. Okay, good. So uh, you know, uh, you know, previously we, we we tried to you know, understand attitude and how you know what makes an attitude like you know we said you know our feelings, our values, our beliefs, and our temperament and yeah. our environment as well and the people we associate with and mm-hmm. you know the, the words we use you know all those things kind of you know contribute to our attitude. Those are tributaries. Yes. And attitude would be the main river, you know, where you know everything goes to. Yes. Uh, so that's why. Uh, so, so that's, that's how it is. And, uh, and, and what we say is, an attitude is one of the very important functions of our mind. Mm-hmm. You know, because if you don't have a mind, you don't have an attitude. Basically, that's how it is. Mm-hmm. You don't have an attitude with your hand or with your, you know, whatever your body parts mm-hmm. per se. Mm-hmm. And those body parts really, you know, ex- express or reflect whatever attitude is, you know, deep, you know, seated inside of your mind. 
So basically, as we said, you know, it's just a predisposition or a tendency <coughs> to take things positively or negatively. Mm. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, uh, uh, positive, negative can mean, you know, as we are going to see with the basic attitudes that we have in terms of, you know, negative or positive. Mm. Uh, it's a spectrum. It's a qualitative uh, thing. You can't, you know, I have a hundred attitude. There's nothing like that. Oh, his attitude is not. It's really qualitative. It's either positive or negative. Mm -hmm. Is it good or bad? Mm -hmm. So it's maybe we, we qualify. We can't, it's really hard to quantify mm -hmm. attitude. So when we say change in attitude, you know, you just change the spectrum from the low end to a high end, mm -hmm. from the negative end to the positive mm -hmm. end. And it doesn't just happen. Oh, today I'm going to have a positive attitude. That's a good thing to say. Mm -hmm. But it needs more work than that. Mm -hmm. Because that negative attitude doesn't happen overnight, first of all. Mm -hmm. And that it didn't happen because, you know, you chose to have it necessarily. So mm -hmm. you got it from your school, you got it from your, you know, family, you got it from your friends, you got it from media, you got it, you know, from whatever, you know, food you eat, even including that, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> because when we eat good food, you know, sometimes we can can help your attitude in a way because if you're malnourished you know it yes. doesn't help your attitude and, and i mean it's for <clears throat> uh but you know uh, when we see attitude you know uh, there are three phases to one's attitude it's yeah. not necessarily you know positive or negative this is his thing called also an ambivalent or yeah. a confused attitude you know you're not really positive you're not really negative probably that's worse than negative attitude because it's really difficult to work with yeah. sometimes you know that's an, an uh, it's not a well for it's a poorly formed attitude mm -hmm. it's really you know it doesn't have a shape a size a color it's really you know when you say is this person trusting or is this a mistrusting you don't know if he wants to trust and then uh, so that attitude is not well for it's a also a kind of attitude so we call it an ambivalent attitude you know so if you have somebody in your life you know someday you trust someday you don't basically that's a mistrust in a way but you know it's really no uh, not sure so it's not only positive and negative there's some you know third phase to that too okay. so the other thing is you know with attitude you know probably there are countless attitudes mm. it's not like you know we have you know one two three four and, uh, you know if you're in inferiority is an attitude you know, and sometimes people come out have the opposite superiority complex people are full of themselves and stuff so those, those are kind of attitudes too and you know when you depending on you know how mature you are and you know with individual difference people can have you know many many kinds of attitudes mm. but the way i see and the way i address this issue is you know there are basic attitudes Basic. that can govern you know that's this is a mm. primary attitude mm. you know people may disagree with this but you know for practical reasons you know i focus on those okay i actually say you know there's five of them okay. you know if you really know see those five attitudes and they have you know opposite ends they have you know positive end to them or a negative end to them mm -hmm. that's why you know some people may say these are not attitudes these are virtues mm -hmm. you know virtues are you know partly you know your attitude included in that mm -hmm. so you know i want to see this this is this five five <coughs> attributes or five uh, 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 uh character traits yes in light of an attitude mm -hmm. and, and the first one you know i call it you know the greatest attitude what's you know we, we all want you know i want to have the greatest attitude mm. the greatest attitude is you know what makes you great and what makes other people feel great mm -hmm. around you mm. what makes life great mm. and you know most people may say oh what is that and mm. it's simple it's mm. gratefulness you know gratefulness, gratefulness is great uh, gratitude is great you know it can, in a way <laughs> you can remember that way because you know, gratefulness, gratefulness doesn't necessarily mean you know you, you're praising your god or you know you're praising you know your creator that's one aspect of that yes. uh, but the other thing is you know saying thank you thank you yes thank you it's a you know some cultures say thank you for everything some cultures say thank you for nothing uh. they don't say thank you mm -hmm. And, you know, to, to appreciate what you have, yes. who you are, yes. uh, who, you know, your country, your people, and yeah. know, what you eat, yes. life, when yeah. you wake up. And, you know, the, 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 the very fascinating thing is, you know, they did research on this, and people who are grateful, they live longer, they live happier, they make other people happier. Yeah. Okay. So to be, to be grateful doesn't necessarily mean to be religious. Yes. It includes that, too, if you want to. Yes. But, you know, to be grateful means, you know, to appreciate, to be thankful. Yes. Like, you know, in our culture, you know, uh, you know, we have that gratefulness. You know, we, we don't have to, we don't have to minimize that. But when we can work on that. Mm. 
most people don't know how to appreciate themselves. You yeah. know, they feel so, you know, you know sweaty to yeah. when somebody, oh, he feels pride, don't appreciate him. In front. You know, if you appreciate somebody, you have to appreciate people. Yes. Like, you know, our late prime minister. And people really appreciated him when, 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 when he was deceased. Yes. I mean, it's good, you know. I, I think it would be even better when we do it when the person is, yes. you know, the person can see that. Yes. You know, all the tears and all those things. Yes. You know, that's really, you know, a very deep appreciation of what he's done for the country. Yes. I mean, that is, that's what it is. Yeah. But, you know, our culture, you know, there's a saying in our culture, so Kal Hede or Kal Mota, mm. I'm a second. No, oh, it should be done before he's gone mm. or he's dead. Yes. And, you know, with kids, you know, praise makes them grow. Yeah. Praise makes them who they are. So praise and cares for what they're doing. And you don't have to measure them with your status mm -hmm. or with your level. Mm. So who, who, you know, husbands and wives, you know, people know how to appreciate strangers, but they don't have to appreciate their, you know, their family. Yeah. And you have housemates, for example. People yeah. don't appreciate them because they do 24 hours. They work, you know, they wash your clothes, they do this, they do that. And at the end of the day, oh, don't appreciate her. If you appreciate her, you know, she would feel proud and she would live. No, it does not work that way. Mm. So, you know, gratefulness or, you know, being grateful, gratitude, is the greatest attitude, as I said. Gratefulness to, you know, see the greatness of things mm -hmm. or the value of things and saying that mm -hmm. it really changes. If we, you know, the, the, the opposite is really, you know, very revealing because the opposite is complaining. Mm -hmm. Ungratefulness, mm -hmm. unthankfulness. Mm -hmm. Whatever is done, you know, you don't even, you know, give it a uh, recognition. Mm -hmm. And you know, at workplaces, you mm -hmm. know, there is you know, in the U.S. there is a boss's day, nurses day, doctors day. You know, even days day, even days are appreciated <laughs> in a way. I mean, it's, it's a good culture. There is a Thanksgiving day, for example. Yes, Last yes, week was Thanksgiving. Was, you know, yeah. people. It's not only for God. Yeah. I mean, it's a good thing to thank people. God because you know we have to appreciate that aspect of. But people appreciate people. Family gathers, and you know, I appreciate so so much in this way, so it's input in my life. You yes. know, I appreciate this. You no, know, the person even may not know, you know what he's done for. Then that encourages you to do more good. Absolutely. So every good thing and every great thing comes from praise. Yeah. And those people who do great things, they have grown in that appreciation environment. Mm. So I think, you know, we have to know how to appreciate our leaders, yes. not before they, not when they die, yes. it's before. Yes. And we have to appreciate, you know, our families, yes. our kids, mm. our spouses, you know, in, in, in where we work, even yes. a stranger who does something for us, you know, we have to say thank you. Yes. And when somebody let us pass when on the road when we drive, we don't have to just, you know, turn our face and drive. We have to say, you know, thank you for letting me pass. And that would encourage the other person, okay, I should do this. is really good now. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so that's one. This is one attitude. Yes. Okay. And then we, we can continue the others. Yes, yes, we will do that. So what we're doing uh, today is we're having a session on uh, attitude and now we're going deeper. So within attitude, there is, uh, now we've just started with one. Gratitude, which one is attribute. the greatest one. Gratitude, the greatest one. Okay. Grat and the other spectrum is. Oh, we can go. I can list them out if you, you want. We will that. do that. Okay. Uh, when we come back or yes. Yes. Okay, when we sure, come sure, back. Sure, so okay. we started off with gratitude, and we'd like to hear from you, our dear audiences. Uh, what does that mean, gratitude? How How are you experiencing it in your life? Yeah. How That's do you see that? You know, are people are appreciating you. Are, yes. are growing up. How do you see it at school and? Everybody, yeah. And are you giving <coughs> that to other people also? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we'll be right back. Okay.
On the bright side of the road Bumbling my lines to a lazy cat On the step outside her door She opens up and I'm in the Polaroid Standing next to her The princess and the passenger Greatness Show with Sophie. Come and cultivate the seed of greatness that lies within you every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. right here on 105.3 Afro FM, your infotainment station. Take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you. How can I just let you know? You leave without a trace when I stand here taking every breath with you. Ooh, you're the only one who really knew me at all. How can you just walk away from me when all I can do is watch you leave? Cause we share the Greatness Show here on 105.3 Afro FM. I'm your host Sophie, and we have Dr. Mehrat with us today. He's uh, our trainer for the day, giving us a session on attitude and uh, how it really affects our life. And we've started off with uh, one of the attributes of attitude that is um, gratefulness or gratitude. Or gratitude, and we continue. 
so, you know, I said, you know, with gratitude, you know, you have GR, which is, you know, with greatest, you know, and then attitude. So, so gratitude is an attitude, primarily. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can, we express it in, in action. Of, of, you know, every attitude, unless expressed in action, you know, is, is a dead attitude. You know, mm-hmm. It's not used to that. So, yeah. but attitude should lead us to action, mm-hmm. should us to decision. Mm-hmm. And, you know, with, you know, with complaining, as I said, is always the opposite of gratitude. You know, I don't like to be around people with complainers. Yeah. And nobody likes that. Yeah. And if somebody is grateful about life and it's energizing, and, you know, yeah. it makes you do, want to do more. If yeah. I say thank you, it doesn't make you do less. It makes you do more. Yeah. And uh, being appreciated makes, you know, takes the best out of you. Yeah. So, or brings the best out of you so you know with the complaining there's a saying which i like you know when you complain you explain your pain for no gain i mean Uh. you know it's explaining your pain no no nobody wants to really hear that even solve it so you know complaining you know it might have a difference you know when something is wrong you have to of course complain that's not what i'm I'm by complaining but you know Uh. complaining about everything you know yourself your life and everything so uh, being critical When you have your child bringing in his score or his, uh, you know, uh, his test result from school, and if you see the two X's, not the, you know, the, the, the eight rights, you know, it's, it's, it's really not. You, know, you have to be first grateful about the eight, you know, things he answered or she answered, yes. right? And then you can deal with the others. You have to always deal with what's not there in the context of what is there. Mm. So to be critical, you know, everything, you know, you look things critically and, you know, negatively, and then and, and, and you cannot be grateful. Mm. So when you're grateful, it really makes, you know, uh, life great. In, 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 in a short yep. way, and, and, and that takes us to you know, another uh, 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 <coughs> basic attitude, uh, and that's like you know I call it the highest attitude. Okay. So from the greatest to the so highest, highest. It's a nice trip. I think everybody <laughs> was like that. Okay. You know, nobody probably most people wouldn't guess this is the highest attitude. Is humility. Humility. It's in being humble. Um, when we say humility, a lot of people think, oh, humility is not good because, you know, it's inferiority, yeah. it's, you know, lack of confidence, it's weakness. It's not. Uh, humility is having all the strengths and being able to restrain that mm-hmm. and using it for the good of others. Mm. If somebody comes for your service, if mm. you are humble, yeah. you treat that person as a king. Yeah. That doesn't mean you're a slave. No. You are more of a, you are another king. Yeah. So, you know, the opposite of humility is not lack of confidence or fearfulness. Yes. Oh, I mean the meaning of that. You know, to to know the meaning of humility, you have to know the opposite mm. and be treated by the opposite. <laughs> Somebody who is really pride, proud and mm. you know full of pride and arrogance, and yeah. when you go to get something and they treat you like a trash, yes. would you feel okay? No. No, you wouldn't feel. No. So to be humble means to treat people in yourself in life with due respect uh-huh. that's your attitude when somebody comes to you you don't see for example somebody comes to beg you know some coin from you you don't see that beggar you see the you know the dignity of that man or that woman yes so you treat them with respect you can give them 10 cents yes. 10 cents with respect is more than thousands thousands yeah, of dollars absolutely. with with disrespect so with humility what we say is you know to understand your value to understand others value yeah. to understand life's value yeah. and treat that with you know the utmost respect mm. and everybody wants to get that because yeah. deep inside us we want to be respected mm. we want to be treated nice but if nobody is humble who's going to treat us like no, one no one so with with <clears throat> with humility you know uh, that's what we where it comes you know when you go you know out of your house treat as if you're going to serve everybody Mm. And that's not inferiority. Mm. Actually, inferiority complex in the psychological, you know, understanding, it is an injured pride. Mm. Somebody is really inferior, deep down, you know, they resent their inferiority. Mm. It's not like a willing surrender mm. of your, your service to others. Mm. It's, you know, every time, you know, when you have inferiority complex or inferiority, that's not totally. And, you know, lack of confidence is not. Actually, a humble person is the most confident person. You're so confident in what you give to others and how you look yeah. at others, you know, you, 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 you're, you know, full of confidence. Yes. But you don't express your confidence by, you know, running over people. Yes. 
mm. you express your confidence by raising people mm. and somebody may say no i don't deserve this no you deserve that mm. you deserve my best service mm. and do you think that person will come back again oh, yeah. always mm -hmm. you know for customer service humility is the best you know <laughs> the best uh, you know for you know husband his wife do you, do you know anybody who, who got divorced because you know his husband or wife is oh. a humble person no no it's always you know our pride in our arrogance yes. you know if, if if you have a humble leader as as as, as a nation's leader yes you know that really you no know, rules the nation's peace yes if you have a company ceo or you know a manager if you're humble people don't disrespect you actually they look forward to see you yes. they want to work for you yes. even without salary sometimes yes yes so humility is, you know, the highest attitude because, you know, as you make yourself lower to serve others, people will raise you, you know, above mm. their head. Mm. Mm. But, you know, as you want to run over people's head, they want, you know, they can't wait to put you down. Yes. That's why, you know, with pride, you know, fidelity comes eventually. Mm. With mm. humility, you know, people exalt you. Mm. And even God exalts the humble people. Mm. Humility is really sweet character. Mm. And kids know a humble person, you know, even nature knows a humble person. If you treat animals, if you treat, you know, plants with humility, with respect, mm -hmm. you know, they, they respond. Yeah, yes. So humility is a universal language in a sense. So yeah. you, we, our attitude has to be that. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we say, you know, <clears throat> you know, we don't have to be proud of our pride. That's yeah. you know, something we should be, you know, not, not proud of. I don't want to say ashamed of it, but I can say that too. But, you know, you can also be proud of your high humility. Then, you know, you're not humble anymore. Yes. <clears throat> so, I mean, humility is something, you know, you have to, you know, keep in perspective, you know. In your family, in your business, in your life, in your relationship, mm. it makes everything around us small. Mm. When you're humble, you may think you're serving others, mm. but you know, by serving others, you, everybody would serve you. Mm. And everybody wants to be with you. Mm. And then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, your humility is more important than your achievement. Mm. People would remember you for your humility, not for how, how many things you invent, mm. actually. No. So it's a humility and it's the best attitude. Mm. And when you're humble, you're always teachable. Mm. When you're not humble, you're not. You so when you're not humble, when you have a humble attitude, you don't learn, you stop learning. Mm. And people don't want to teach you know, arrogant people. Mm. And so, so with humility, you, know, you, you are a lifelong learner. Mm. And everybody wants to teach you. And with humility, you can ask. Most of the time, you know, we don't know what to do, we don't know where to go, we don't ask why. Mm. It's just it's a lack of humility. Yeah. We have to be humble enough to ask somebody who knows that. So humility is in a path to grow as well. Wow. And uh, I'm probably, you know, with the respect of time, I can go to that yes, third yes, one. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> So the next one uh, probably would be, uh, it's the most powerful. Powerful. Yeah, so you know, okay. I'm, I'm, not, I'm using, you know, very good <laughs> words for this basic like attitude. It's really good. What's this powerful attitude when you say, this really very potent, very powerful attitude is optimism. Optimism. It's positivity. Powerful mm -hmm. positivity. Okay. Optimism is not, you know, being full or, you know, ignorant of reality. You know the reality. Mm. But uh, when you're an optimist person, is somebody who strongly believes that good will win eventually. Mm -hmm. Somebody who would deeply believe that it would be okay, mm. regardless of the storm, regardless of what's going on around right now. Mm. You can be in the deep you know, pit, mm. but you say, okay, in this pit, you know, I'm going to get strong and getting get out and then I'm going to benefit a lot of people. So mm. you see something good in everything, including the worst things mm -hmm. and situations. Mm -hmm. And most optimist people are the one who would defeat, you know, the bad. Mm. If you are a pessimist, you know, the situation is already bad mm. and you're thinking bad. How can good come out of two bad things? Okay. So, you know, so the, 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 they strongly believe that good would prevail mm -hmm. in their relationship. It can be messy right now, mm -hmm. but they have some hope. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, a seed of hope, optimism. Mm -hmm. you know, you, there is, you know, if I give you a half an empty, half empty uh, glass of water mm -hmm. or half full of glass of water, which one do you prefer? 
I'll have four. Are there any difference? <laughs> no. But you know, <laughs> even imagine. when you hear it, you know, you see, you know, half full is good, that yeah. half empty. Yeah. But you know, being pessimistic, you, know, you have the same amount of water, <laughs> and then you know, oh, it's empty. You know, it looks up, and uh, that's a famous way of uh, describing those. And the other saying, oh, oh, there is, oh, there is good. This, this water. Then water. you drink it, and you may, you know, after walking, you know, 100 miles, 100 you know, feet, you may get at the lake. Exactly. <laughs> but if you complain on the half empty, you might die of thirst. Yeah. So uh, that's what basically what it is. You know, I would say this is, you know, you, 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 it really shapes your destiny. Mm. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you don't know what the day holds. Mm. Don't start with, you know, a gloomy, doomy kind of attitude. Mm. The optimism says, optimism is optimum. It's not like, you know, unrealistic expectation. Mm. It's mm. the optimum. Mm. What is possible. Mm. And there's always good in everything. It's good. And that's what it is. And the opposite is, you know, pessimist. Mm. It's always, you know, sees the negative or opportunist. Sometimes, you know, opportunist is not like some people say, you know, the opportunist, the realist, the remnant. But basically, there are only two. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're an opportunist, you're not really optimist. Mm. So you just find, you know, you, you get something good, you grab it. If not, you know, you, you're, 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 you're done. Mm. But, you know, an optimist, if there's something good, grateful. Mm. It goes on. If mm. there's nothing, grateful works on that and the other thing is a skeptic you know everything you give them they have something to doubt for mm. on and to be skeptic sometimes is good and it's right things because you know that's you know creates question curiosity and goes on but you know to be skeptic of you know your situation and you not know, to have any hope any you know hold on your challenge and your struggles is not is not optimist so what uh, an optimist person is you know or a positive person is very powerful yeah and a positive thinking, actually, you know, uh, <clears throat> the power of positive thinking by uh, Vincent Perle, that's mm -hmm. a very classic book on that. So people who are positive, they bring out positive eventually. Yes. And there is no way by being negative, you can't produce positive. Yeah. If you have a hundred dollar, just to finish this one, a <clears throat> hundred bill or dollar, mm -hmm. and if you put a positive before it, and if you put a negative before it, mm -hmm. how much is the difference? Not much. Really? It's, I mean, it's, it's you have a hundred, number hundred, yeah, which is positive, positive, and you have a number hundred, which is negative. Yes. How much is the difference? 200. 200, yeah. 200, yeah. It's not like, you know, zero and 100. No, it's To 200. be negative is to go all the way to the <laughs> other one. One has a hundred dollar bill, the other one hundred dollar credit, basically yes. debt. So yeah. to be negative is to live in debt. Oh. You're indeed in the ditch. So these attitudes, you know, they don't produce anything by the environment of themselves, but they would, you know, create the environment to, 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 to produce whatever you want. Hmm. So to be positive and to be negative means whatever you have, just put that negative and positive sign. So a positive and a negative person, you know, they can have the same life, the same house. Hmm. One lives in the negative range is, you know, way down than the other who is positive. So that's why positive people who doesn't have money are more rich than negative people who have more money because mm -hmm. the negative money is very destructive. Yes. The positive, no money can, you know, work and get money. That's how I can make it easily. Okay. So we have uh, two more to go? Two more to go, I guess. Um, okay. So uh, we're talking attitude today and uh, Dr. Mehrat is giving us a session on that. We're seeing the attributes. So we have seen there are five as he was just describing and three of them we have seen. Yeah. So gratefulness, uh, uh, humility. humility and uh, uh, optimism, optimism or positivity. Yes. So we have seen three. And for you, our dear audiences, we would like to invite you to, to see yourself. Where are you in, in these two spectrums exactly. that we have been yeah. uh, uh, describing? So try to see where you are and uh, try to notice how you respond to things. Um, uh, today, unfortunately, our text line has been... Um, doesn't seem to work but we're, f we're trying to fix it so uh, we'll get back to you on that but try to do this at home and, and see uh, how it is working out for you oh, yeah. yeah and we'll be right back with two more Tomorrow we still have two more yeah. to go okay
Greatness Show with Sophie. Come and cultivate the seed of greatness that lies within you every Sunday morning from 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. right here on 105.3 Afro FM, your infotainment station. take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever. You are listening to The Greatness Show here on 105.3 Afro FM. I'm your host, Sophie. Today, um, sadly, we don't. our text line is, is not functioning. We're trying to fix it. But uh, we've been, we, ha- we were having a brilliant session with Dr. Mahert. Um, he's, giving us a, he's giving us a session on attitude. And we have just seen three attributes of, of attitude, gratefulness, Humility, humility and, and optimism. optimism. Yes, yes, yes. So we've been asking our dear audiences, even though uh, you cannot send us your text, you can do this at home, seeing yourself where, which spectrum are you in? So there are two spectrums, gratefulness and complaining, humility and pride, mm-hmm. and uh, optimism and pessimism. pessimism exactly. So you can see where am I? You know, you can ask yourself where am I? And we'll come to uh, how, we, how we can fix it in a way that mm-hmm. can... Uh, mm-hmm. Help us. So we have two more to go. Yeah, it, it, this is the way I see it from a practical point of view. Yeah. We have two hands with five fingers. Yeah. Okay. If you are a left-handed person, take your left hand as your positive end. Positive end. Okay. Left if, hand. Yeah. If you're right-handed in at home, you know, take your right hand as your positive end. Okay. And then, you know, don't forget you have another hand which is negative. So you have the potential to be either negative. Or positive. positive. So your thumb is the you know the, 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 the you know the, the greatest finger because you know it really does a lot of things. Mm-hmm. That's your actually you know <coughs> that's your uh, 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 gra- gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah. Okay. Thumb. You know, with thumbs up. Thumbs up. Yeah, I'm, I'm grateful. Okay, grateful. <laughs> so when you're really negative, I'm complaining. You know, on the other hand, it's down, down. <laughs> so you know, that's a two. Okay. So either you are one or the other. Yeah. So every okay. time you know when you cap out today, I should be grateful. If you find yourself thumb down. Your pick angle. it up. Okay, pick it up. And the next thing is your highest, or your 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 your, your uh, powerful uh, attitude, which is positivity or optimism. Yeah. Your index finger. It points off everything. It does, yeah. So your, your optimism is your, your indicator. Oh, mm. let's go this way. Mm. So your index finger. Okay. Either it's wrong, pointing to the wrong direction, which is pessimism. Yeah. Or going to the Right direction, which is pessimism. optimism. Okay. So optimism. you have your index finger as your, you know, optimism okay. uh, finger. Okay. In the highest, which is the highest finger of your fingers? The middle one. Yeah, it's the highest, which is yeah. the your humility. Yes. So every time you have your middle finger, you know, it's the the, the tallest one, yeah. the highest one. If you really want to, uh, to reach your highest point, your life, yes. you don't have to be proud, or you don't have to be arrogant. Yes. You can be humble, and you can really, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, go higher on the mm. ladder. Mm. So sometimes, you know, if you put your 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 your, your hand downwards, Down, yeah. which one is the lowest finger? The, the same finger. Yeah. <laughs> so every time you're proud, you're going downwards. Okay. Every time you are arrogant, you're not. You're, nobody's going to give you respect. Uh-huh. You don't find respect because you demand it. You get respect because you respect others. Yes. Because respect begets respect, yeah. and disrespect does do the same to you. Mm. So put your hand up, and then the highest is humility. The lowest is pride. Yes. And it's, 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 it's really paradoxical to our conventional thinking. Mm. If you know, to know, to you know, yeah. full of yourself and walk around like your big man, people would you know be they may be scared of you. Not, but not it doesn't mean they respect you. Yeah. And you know, you have, you can be the humble person, the most lowly person, and everybody wants to, you to be exalted. Yeah. yeah. So this is. So now the the, the 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 fourth one. The fourth one. Okay. The most critical attitude. Critical. Amal, if you don't have it, you know everything would get ruined. Okay. Okay. If you're humble, and if you don't have this attitude, you get into that. You know. Uh, weakness which you're dread of like you know humility most people say oh to be humble is to be weak no when somebody is really fearful timid cowards and he's not really you know standing up to his ground mm-hmm. it's not because he's humble mm. it's because of this lack of this force attribute yeah. that's courage courage you know if you're courageous and you're humble you, know, you can stand your ground you can humble and say no i don't want to do this yeah you can still humble and say this is wrong mm. You don't have to raise your voice. Yes. 
you can take us and you know without voice you can still you know yes. be assertive yes so courage is critical because mm-hmm. you know we all have some greatness in in us mm-hmm. you know we're created to be great yes it's not like you know a, 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 you know 70 million people are n- n- nothing and 10 million are I mean, 80 million of our people are great mm-hmm. everybody men women kids you know people in the country in the city everybody is great and there is a potential what brings that out courage mm-hmm. you have an idea you're scared the idea dies mm-hmm. it's like you know throwing a seed mm-hmm. the farmer has to have a courage to throw his grain on the soil yeah. and to really believe and to work hard for months to expecting a harvest yes. and so for men most people you know they fail not because they are humble yeah. it's because they, they lack the courage hmm. you can't Hmm. And like if you see Obama when he ran for a presidency, you know his motto was yes we can. Hmm. You know he that's you know that's really you know push the courage because he's the first black president, yes. and you know he he ran against many odds. Yes. Did he become a president? Yes. But he has to take that first step, hmm. which is a step of courage. Hmm. And people who are timid, who are you know compromisers and opportunists and very you know and very fearful. They have so many ideas, but the ideas die in them, and eventually they die with their ideas. Mm-hmm. So, to, 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 a courage is a virtue as well. It's mm-hmm. not just an attitude, but it's, there is an attitude. You know, you can you can know a confident person. Yes, confidence is actually the result of courage. Ah. And I, somebody said, you know, courage, courage. The difference between a courageous and a fearful person is not the absence of fear; it's the management of fear management of fear mm-hmm. you have the fear but you know the fear doesn't manage you mm-hmm. you manage the fear and mm-hmm. then you're courageous uh, if somebody saying no, i have never have any fear that person is not normal mm-hmm. because we all have uncertainties limitations and all those those things kind of you know if you allow them they create you know uh, fear yes. but you know if you use them you know i am limited but you know i have an unlimited potential mm-hmm. i have unlimited you know you know i'm created to become somebody mm-hmm. and it's not arrogance to say that no. because that's the, the reality and for, 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 for you know uh, as a culture we say we are very you know a patriotic and you know courageous people which is true mm-hmm. and we have proven that time and again but you don't you don't really quote the past and to kind of prove who you are you mm-hmm. have to make history now right I mean, if you see our country now, it needs a lot of courageous people in many areas. Mm-hmm. Corruption needs some courageous people to confront it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, education now, the way how our education is run, <coughs> it needs some courageous people. <coughs> see, this education system is not, not, not running well. You know, the kids, you know, the, the way, you know, how we deal with discipline, you know. To, 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 to Bad discipline is not good. No discipline is not good as well. Mm-hmm. How, how can we do that? Somebody has to have some courage to come up with some, you know, uh, uh, some, some, some uh, plan. So there are a lot of things, you know, the way how our city is now changing is very encouraging. But, mm-hmm. you know, if there's some courageous people can come up with even more than what we are now. Yes. And it's, 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 it's a, lot, a lot of things. And courage mm-hmm. is not only for war. Mm. Courage is, you know, for everyday life. Yeah. Courage sometimes is, you know, to hold your kid's hand and show him the areas where you, you know, where you're not sure. I mean, you, because you, know, you instill courage in the kid, and yes. every time something, you know, the kids are very courageous. They come up with wild ideas yeah. because you don't have courage, you, know, you don't have to kill their courage. Yes. You have to come out of your shell. Mm. Mm. So, you know, uh, uh, so probably this much. Uh, this is a game changer attitude, you know. When you're fearful and when you're courageous, you know, the paradigm is different. Mm-hmm. For a courageous person, you know, the, the sky is the limit. Mm-hmm. And people who went to the moon, it's a car- courage, you know. You, somebody has the courage to say, you know, we can go. Yes. And uh, probably the last one, uh, or if, I mean, from this five list, and this is the most fundamental. Everything rests on this attitude. Okay. This is our little finger. It still looks little, but you know, it really, you know, is you know, if you put your finger, your hand on this way, and every five hand would be, you know, resting on that. Yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> on the little one. On the little one, if you put it like this. So that fundamental attitude, the foundational, I can even say, attitude is trust. Trust. And you know, I came here 
to this stadium because I trusted you. Yes. I mean, I drove uh, this morning, you know, okay, <laughs> Sophie would be there and then everybody uh, will do this. It's a trust. And I trusted that you would show up. Exactly. How <laughs> would you come and how would you, you know, uh, tell them that your audience that, you know, will have this show because trust, you yes. know, you work, you know, you, you get your salary probably at the end of the month. You yes. trust that your employers. Yes. You trust the chair you sit in. Yes. I mean, life is trust. Yes. But the problem is there is a high trust society in terms of society and it's mm. a low trust society mm. like everywhere you go people would search you as if you have something mm. if you go to hospital if you go to an empty store and then everywhere you go and people look at you what's going on mm. if you apply for him to do something oh he must have something in mind mm. and this mistress speciousness really kills a lot of creativity you know, a mm. lot of other but stress you know people can become who they are mm. because you know if i tell you there is a bomb in this room. Mm. How would you do the show? It can't blow any time. Yeah, it can't. And it, there may not be a bomb, but you know, sometimes we do that, like, you know, for a marriage to last, there must be trust. Mm. For a parent-child relationship to last, there must be trust. Mm. A child trusts his parent. You know, there's no strong trust like a a child has on his parents but you know more some parents would would would, would abuse that trust you know yeah. because their kids you know in different uh, forms and shapes you know because i see that in, in, my, in my work yeah. and those people those kids you know when they grow up how can they trust yeah. so you okay. know some cultures they are so high trust you know with trust you can do things very fast mm. If you don't trust me and if you say, you know, I really need to know this guy and I, know, I need to know how much he knows about this stuff, how much he's faithful to come on time, you have to check me for six days or six months. Yes. And then, you know, by then I'm tired or probably I'll be going back anyway. <laughs> so you, there's no show like this. And when you business partner, you know, if there's no trust, yeah. uh, it doesn't work that no. way. So, you know, basically, you know, trust is, uh, uh, in a short way, how I say it is, you know, trust means, you know, you see somebody, you meet someone, you say, this person is innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he has to blow his trust before, you know, I can, you know, Judge. work on or say something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most places where there's, there's a low trust society or a low trust, you know, individual, they say, you know, this guy is guilty until proven innocent. Mm -hmm. So either you 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 are you know having a paradigm of you know guilty until proven innocent mm -hmm. or innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a business and say somebody say, oh we have to know your background. I mean you have to check some background. Definitely that's yeah. a procedure. Yeah. But you know if you really exhaust your your resource and your system your time on really not trusting that person, you know by the time you give him the 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 the, 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 the permission to do some stuff, the person is already tired. Yeah. You know resource is gone. So trust has to uh, to be there uh, for him. So when you wake up in the morning, how you see the day, how you see your friends, how you see a relationship. Mm. When you go for a travel, how do you trust your spouse? How do you trust them? When you give assignments, delegations to people, how much you trust the micromanaging, you know, you go behind back their back and see, okay, you've done this, you've done that. And you're killing the, the person's, you know, autonomy and imagination and creativity. So, you know, in most places, if you see, there is no trust. So people function at the minimum. Mm -hmm. So, and then the cost is high. Mm -hmm. Let me give you this example. Uh, there, there is this company which in the U.S., which in the, in the Second World War time, it was, the, the company was turned into, uh, uh, they, they were producing some, you know, high security, uh, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, there was so much security in the company. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, and the government was paying for that because, you know, they, they were producing something for the government. And when the war was over, nobody, you know, cared to remove those, you know, security systems. And then every time a new security system comes they install that and they hire a lot of people on that but now they're no more producing you know classified stuff they're mm -hmm. producing in everyday you know, stuff mm -hmm. but nobody cared to to check that mm -hmm. so the company get bankrupted mm -hmm. and they were trying to see why and they were producing a lot and the marketing is good and everything and they say you know the most of the profit goes to the security system mm -hmm. that you know the, sure. the whole you know cost so they say, why are we spending this? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. So when they remove that and then they do their job with 
no need for security. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, they made a lot of profit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, we have uh, a good example would be if you go to the average house, there's so many keys. Mm -hmm. The food is locked, the fruit is locked, the tin is locked, the sugar is locked. And I mean, probably China should be very indebted to us. You know, we are the, probably the, the one who buy a lot of keys and keypads and stuff. Why do we lock? Sometimes the key, the keypad and the key is more expensive than what we put in the, in the, mm. in the box. Mm. And that is really a very you know, vivid symbol of how much trust is very important. Mm. So, what we feel is they steal. Do we prevent people from stealing by locking? No, mm. they break it or you know they, they do that. But if you open it, we can deal with the stealing aspect of it. Mm. So trust is, you know, it goes everywhere. Mm. A trusting person is somebody who's relaxed. Because, you know, when you trust me, you do it once. Mm. When you don't trust me, you have to do it minute by minute. Because when you're a suspicious person, have you seen a paranoid suspicious mm. person? Mm. You know, everything else, you know, mm. you, it's really draining. Yes. And, you know, when it goes really beyond a limit, we call it paranoia. Mm. And in psychiatry, and it's, it's, it's a form of mental illness. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so suspiciousness or paranoia or, you know, uh, not trusting, mistrust is not a good attitude. It doesn't, you know, our mind is created to function optimally in a state of trust. If I trust you, or if I don't trust you, which one would help you do f well? Trusting trust. me, yeah. yeah. And, and wise teachers in the old days, you know, they do, if somebody is really annoying them and is really a nuisance to the class, they make him what? A class monitor. Yeah. And then he was trusted with so yeah. much. And then that person would be nice. And it's, because, you know, we think that by mistrusting, we can, we, can, we can prevent what we're afraid of. No, by trusting, you do that. Yeah. So trust has to start as an attitude. Good. So we're, um, we have 20 minutes, and I know that we have something else uh, we haven't touched upon. Yeah, well, how attitude is formed uh, and yes. how we can change it. How I think we can change that's the conclusion part. Yeah, so we'll, we'll come to that. And uh, today, uh, Dr. Mehrat is giving us a session on attitude. We have touched upon five attri uh, attributes, attributes of, of... Five basic or primary attitudes, yes, like our fingers, like you know, thumbs. Thumbs, uh, uh, gratitude. Gratitude. And then the pointer is positivity, as our index finger, and the highest, which is our middle finger, would be the humility, because yes. when you make it down, it's which be the lowest as well. Yeah. And the ring finger would be courage. Courage, that's our, you know, ring finger, our promise. You know, this courage is very, you know, where the confidence comes from. Yes. And the, the last one, the small, it's not really small, but that's. Uh, the trust, trust, trust. The foundation of everything. So we're asking our dear audiences to check yourself, to trying to see w in this spectrum where do you find yourself, and and try to uh, see if it's serving you. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, we're going to see how we can change that. If you would like to change it, how can you do it? And Dr. Mehrat is going to show us the way, and we'll be right back. Yeah. 
are listening to The Greatness Show with me, your host Sophie, and Dr. Mehrat today, who is giving us a session. Um, we, are, we do really apologize that uh, our text line is not working today, but we know that you're listening and uh, doing the exercises that we've been asking you to. So we will conclude with the road ahead. Good. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> as I said, you know, you're, uh, if you're left-handed, your left hand would be your positive, you know, attitudes hand. So every time, you know, that's your powerful hand, you know, make sure your positive attitudes really build mm -hmm. and dominate. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the, we call it dominant hand. Mm -hmm. Because when, if you want to do something, you, you use your dominant hand. The other is, you know, always inferior, unless you, you know, you use. But so that's what I say. If you want to write, you use your dominant hand. Mm -hmm. And if you're right-handed, the same thing, you know, use that. But don't forget as well, you have another hand, mm -hmm. which means, you know, we have that, that inclination as well because of how we raised up, how we, yes. we, how we raised up and how we grew up and how we, you know, educated and we all those experiences have also, you know, impacted us or dented us yes. in our, you know, in our mind to, to also kind of switch before we know it to the negative aspect. You know, mm -hmm. like earlier we were talking and I was saying something and you're picking on me and that. You know. <coughs> I mean, sometimes we, we do that unconsciously yes. because, yes. you know, yes. our mind is not only conscious, it's an unconscious, which actually dictates most of our behavior. Yes. But if you really keep that to your consciousness, those five positive attitudes yes. in your family life, in your individual, work life, business life, and everywhere, and if you can kind of teach your kids, it's very basic and simple. Yes. Teach your kids these five basic attitudes. And all the other attitudes are governed by this. Mm -hmm. If you have those negative, you will produce many negative attitudes. Yes. If you have, a, if, for example, if you lack humility and if you have the other four, that lack of humility or that arrogance would infect all the other. Mm. If, you, if you, for example, an arrogant and courageous, what you become? A tyrant. Yes. Or it is a dictator. Mm. Because dictator people have courage, but they don't have humility. Yeah. Or if you are, you know, a, a humble person, but if you don't have a courage, what will you become? You, so you become the you're dormant or you become very inferior, complex, stricken person. Yes. So courage, you know, helps humility mm. for you to stand on your ground. Mm. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you have one of the attitudes to however best level. You have to nurture all those five. It's like, you know, you work with your two mm. feet. You need both. Yes. So you need all the five. Mm. So for a good gursha or a f for a good bite of food, you need all the five yeah. to kind of get it in there and put it in your mouth. Same thing with attitude. Yes. So the thing is, you know, the final we have to come to a practical matter. Of, yes. You know, okay, we know we have attitudes. Okay, these five attitudes are so good. You know, how can I get them? Where can I buy them? Are they on sale? Are they in which store and stuff? They are in a store. They're on sale. Mm -hmm. And where they are in your mind. Mm. So you have to get in there and, you know, know how to change them. Mm. And the good thing about this talk is, you know, it's not something, you know, very abstract mm. or very fancy. And then at the end of the day, we can do nothing about, oh, how good it is. But, you know, I can do Jarakada Bot Island or, you know, <laughs> more than more, like, give me a bread. It's not that way. We can do something about mm. it. The first thing is, you know, we have to know how attitudes are formed. Mm. As we said, you know, we're attitude neutral when we're born. Mm. So, when you're growing up, the first thing that affects our attitude is relationships. Our primary caregivers, our siblings, our friends and stuff. So you have to work on that. Mm -hmm. So how you relate with people. Mm -hmm. the, the, the other thing which really formed our attitude is what we heard, mm -hmm. the words we mm -hmm. heard. Mm -hmm. You know, people told us, you know, how, what we read. Mm -hmm. So the first, the most powerful thing, one of the powerful things is words, what mm -hmm. we say. Mm -hmm. And what people say is very important, but what we say is even more important. Mm -hmm. You know, when we, it's not about not saying negative things, it's saying positive things. Mm -hmm. So the best way not to say negative things is to learn how to say positive things. Wake mm -hmm. up in the morning, say, oh, thank God, this is a good day. I have one more day to live. Uh, this is an I'm healthy, you know, my family is okay. Say it in words. Because because your mind listens to what you say. Mm. And if you believe, you know, you believe the person you love most. That's true. Yes. And there's no one you love more than yourself. yourself so yes. if you say something, if you think, you know, your mind don't believe you, it believes you. Mm. Actually, you know, your mind is ready to hear what you're saying. And it takes it to heart and then you would fulfill it eventually. So the first control we need to learn or exercise is on our tongue, mm. what we say. 
not only for us to other people mm. because you know when we speak we're forming attitude in us and in others mm. so whatever we go our words are very important where, where do we get good words we have to read good stuff mm. people who read junk stuff but toxic stuff they, they produce the same mm. so you know that's one you know if if if, if, if religious person read your, your bible your 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 you know your quran or you really i mean this this is very important mm. uh, attitude forms from that mm. and if 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 if, if you are a uh, 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 you know an educated person you know if you, you can get uh, some self self-help books like you know as the speed of stress by Stephen Covey on trust is a best book this is an example you know the power of attitude there's a book called that and I, I don't remember the, the author anymore but you know there are other, a lot of books you know read books that's where you get your material to think and to talk about the other thing is you know the second thing is thinking feeling acting mm -hmm. this is how our attitude forms we have our feelings we have our thinking and we have our acting mm. so when you think it's not like you know your mind think without you mm. so mind what you're thinking about if you're getting into that negative thought hold yourself stop yourself and you know try to think that you know positive thing and if you're feeling negative you know don't harbor on that like if you're feeling you know angry don't you know hold that anger for a long time because that anger would you know shape a lot of your attitude but sometimes it's really hard to control your feelings the best way to control your feeling is to work on your action and your thinking because you know your action and your thinking feeds your feeling mm. so uh, when you feel you know, the, 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 the use of feeling you know when you feel bad recognize that bad feeling mm. and you know don't you know let it go as mm. it is so you, you can do something about changing it so feelings are you know our sirens they mm. tell us something is not going right mm. so you you don't have to be a victim to your feeling mm. so when you have a bad feeling you know you have to explore why mm. if you have to amend some relationship go and do forgiveness mm. or ask forgiveness if you have some other issues you haven't dealt with you know postponing or stuff mm. just do that so mm. by acting something you can change your feeling mm -hmm. or sometimes you know if you're thinking about a lot of you know bad stuff from the past and your feeling is affected you know change your thinking so you cannot just feel helpless and be a victim to your feeling mm -hmm. so feelings are really you know your, your thermostat they tell you where you are don't ignore your feelings but mm -hmm. you know don't suck them to them and the third one is you know focus on the primary attitude these primary attitudes read on them talk about them mm -hmm. discuss about them mm -hmm. you know check on them if they are there mm -hmm. and if they are growing from year to year mm -hmm. that's very important uh, so practice makes perfect nothing happens overnight yes. because whatever attitude you have right now it over is formed over you know over the years mm -hmm. so don't start today and oh yes this is taking that it happens it's a discipline you mm -hmm. have to do it you know step by step step mm -hmm. by step step by step the other thing you know i do is and you know, i pray Mm -hmm. I encourage people to pray mm -hmm. for God's help. Mm -hmm. People who pray have more virtues. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, 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 they are the people that they can do, they can forgive others easily, they can, you know, get insights. And, you know, it's a self reflective mode. It's mm -hmm. also asking for a higher help. Mm -hmm. So, prayer changes attitude. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage people to do that first thing in the morning or whatever time. Take mm -hmm. your time to pray, engage. You know, you know, uh, search yourself. And prayer is very powerful. And mm -hmm. uh, that's you know, it's, it was research and, and experience tells me that. The last thing is, you know, get a role model. Mm -hmm. If you want to be optimist, find an optimist person and imitate. Mm -hmm. Imitation is the best way of learning. Mm. If you want to be courageous, you know, don't be around people who are fearful and who just, you know, mm. are having a, so find somebody on each, you know, attribute, somebody who can symbolize. It can be in biographies, you can mm. read that, or you can relate to people and surround yourself with people who is positive attitude. I think we, we can see this much <laughs> probably is okay, I guess. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mehret, for coming and giving us this beautiful session. Sure, I am, it's a pleasure. Uh, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> um, so it unfortunately so. today we, can, we cannot get any texts from our audiences, but they were there and listening and hopefully it has been a very 
I mean, for me, I, I, I have learned so much. But my thinking, I think they are not really interested in the topic. <laughs> so, they are just no, no, no. away from so the, no, the radio. See, so I'm, I'm saying, what kind of attitude is that? That's a, a, a pessimism. So. Oh, really? Is that pessimism? <laughs> so, okay, you know what? Oh, everybody's listening. They're busy <laughs> listening. They don't take us there. No, just <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> okay. That's so, good. this tells us that you need to come back again so that you can uh, talk to yeah, the, the audience sure, also sure, next sure. time yeah, around and we'll pleasure. do another show. Yes. So, thank you. We're very grateful. Yeah, very, thank very you so much. I uh, appreciate your uh, inviting and having me here. And we say thank you to our dear listeners for being with us for yeah. the past two hours and doing the exercises with us. And we hope that this has been useful to you. And um, we will definitely fix the, the text line next time and then we get uh, your, your response also. So thank you so much for making the show great every week. And uh, we really, really um, uh, wish you a really good uh, weekend. Oh, yes. And uh, a great week. Yeah. And we'll see you next week with another guest.